I'm in Roosevelt National Forest right now and on my way to my destination I was hiking up this slope and I noticed there was just quartz and mica everywhere. Uh, I've identified two minerals. I'm pretty sure that's lapidolite right there on the quartz and then this uh, maybe fuchsite. I recognize it from another barrel mine that I was in Virginia uh, having to look at and prospecting at and yeah so i know for sure that this is a barrel mine based on what i'm seeing it's not indicated on any maps but there's giant books of muscovite and i found some barrel you know just go ahead and drop your expectations right now uh, for what it looks like it's you know it's just rough and it's light blue and you know almost hard to recognize but i would like to show it anyways it looks like we're dealing with uh primary quartz and then we have alkali feldspar being the dominant feldspar in this region and the dominant rock type of igneous is a um a tonalite which is a quartz dominant uh diorite but here that is a barrel nodule right here and here's another one that's all barrel Oh, and look at that. That's actually black tourmaline. You can tell by the geometry. There's another one. And it looks like they're running right on this contact. Most of the pegmatites in this area are not zoned, meaning they don't they don't have concentric ring, rings of like a quartz core and then uh, some quartz uh, feldspar and then mica but this one actually is and in the zone pegmatites is where you get the main mineralization that's barrel and the more i look at it the more i'm seeing it i'm able to pick it out and yeah this is just a sideshow i'm actually on my way up there where i i have a feeling that there's high potential for collectible crystals you can see I hiked right up a, a quartz vein. These are flowing in between the layers, the lamina, the foliation of the metamorphic rock, these dikes, these uh, what's creating pegmatites. And I just followed it right up this uh, easy pathway. It's run almost the entire way and it just keeps on getting bigger. So I'm heading back there where there's a definitive contact between co uh, metamorphic and igneous rock. I'm at the next ridge over and we can still see these veins dipping down with the same exact, like exactly in line in between the foliations of the metamorphic rock. There's a, a beautiful example of the foliations of the metamorphic rock, how they're all this is in a plane this way. So the veins are coming right in between and that's why I'm here in this specific area. And I think it's going to be more so back up this direction. Things are just getting bigger and bigger. So we are going in the right direction. We have some metamorphic, and then that's about it. And then we go up. Bold Quartz Bluff. Yeah, no term yet. I'm seeing higher concentration of quartz and no evidence of anyone being here, like even hundreds of years ago, no prospects, no trash, no anything. And look at the consistency of the ground. Yeah, it is metamorphic, but this is what you wanna be looking for when you're looking for pegmatites and metamorphic rock. Check out this. This is either a migmatite or a gneiss. Migmatite is the highest grade metamorphic rock, which means that it's undergone the most heat and pressure of, of any rock type possible before it turns into an igneous rock. So being that it's, we're at the contact, that's the word, of the metamorphic and the igneous rock. And this is where the magic happens. I'll show you why. Look at all this quartz. All of this is right in situ. And if your surface looks like that, then yeah, you better be thorough in your investigation. So check this out. This right here, this tourmaline, look right there, and look right here. It looks like it looks like charcoal, but no lie, that's tourmaline. Big black tourmaline crystals. There's terminations. A lot of it's really fractured. Look at these. That's a phase. That's a termination of tourmaline. And that's probably a big old garnet, that big thing. Metamorphic rock uh, garnet is commonly hosted in. 
metamorphic rock. And these are, look at all these loose garnets. They're just sitting there. I'm gonna have a look around. I think it's gonna get better than this. Yeah, looks pretty ripe. I'm gonna shuffle around some dirt. That's tourmaline. It's not keepable, but it's tourmaline. When you find a vein and there's nothing left in it, it's always good to check a little down the hill, like take everything in reverse order, go from vein to float, because everything that was in the vein is just a little bit down the hill, in the dirt, waiting for you to collect. Like, watch this, I'm sure we'll find a piece of tourmaline in no time. Mm. Yeah, all of that just came from right here and came from this initial vein. Also, shout out to Nico Jackson. I know you find some bomb tourmaline and I attribute it to the good karma that you energetically transferred to this crystal that you gifted me that led me direct to this deposit today. Much low. Say the best for last. This should be the best. I mean, it's right next to the whole system. <laughs> Look at that. It's broken, but who cares? It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure this will be densely packed. Keep an eye out for other uh, rare minerals because this is a volatile zone. Boron, tourmaline is a borosilicate. So keeping an eye out for other rare and unique minerals is necessary. There's tor a tourmaline piece. There's a tourmaline piece. Yeah, I think this whole area, I should probably switch to a stick. This is right below where all the goodies are. I mean, there's tons of like little chips and pieces in here. Oh, an all-star. Look at that. It's got a termination. Trigonal. Crystal system. Big old black tour. Oh, yay. We got a termination here. It's everywhere. Time to do this all day. Because I do have the time, but you know, you gotta level up. You'll find something good. You'll probably find something better. If you keep looking, I always make the mistake of, I'm like, yeah, something awesome. And I'll spend all day here and the moon will be rising in no time. So onward. I think that's collectible. And shout out to Daniel James Griffiths for telling me not to bring specimen bags because that's when you find crystals. No bags, no problems. We are at the climax of the video in terms of collectible specimens, but feel free to keep watching if you're interested in the development of pegmatites along this igneous metamorphic contact in which I do note other smaller occurrences of tourmaline, garnet, and magnetite. Look at that. Like, that's all one crystal right there. It's obvious that there's more. So, where to go? You know, this is really motivating, but to just go run around like a motivated idiot wouldn't be constructive to finding more. So, the thing is, look at the trend of the vein. I notice that they're getting bigger going up the ridge line, and the ridge line is the most resistant. So, it's going to be up in here. Another tourmaline bearing pegmatite. Another spot of tourmaline. 
It's small, but all of them get mapped. Another deposit. And there as well. I've been wandering up this ridge line and zigzagging back and forth, back and forth. And I noticed consistently the pegmatites on this side are getting a lot bigger. Where we can see right here, we have a very distinguished LCT type pegmatite. There's two different types, NYF and LCT. NYF are from uh, evolving magmas, mainly in like batholiths. So they're completely derived from uh, igneous origins. This, an LCT, stands for lithium cesium uh, tantalum. Is a, They're classified based on their chemistry and origins. This is derived from metamorphic rocks. So all of these little red dots right here are actually garnets. And these are, it's a lot more common to have beryllium in these type of pegmatites. And let me show you some of the other minerals that I've been seeing in this. I found a little bit more tourmaline. I mean, just crazy grain size on all of this. Look at those big old micas. And uh, I'm sure we'll find some better examples of garnet like that. Like in schist and nice, it's common to find garnets. So we got another one right there. Um, I'm sure we can just pick out like a whole dozen right now. Um, yeah, that is a garnet. That's a garnet. That's a garnet. That right there is a garnet. Yeah, they're just really everywhere throughout it. Let's see if I can get that little garnet out. Hey, it's a garnet and it's round. Uh, so I came down and I actually followed a vein the entire way up and it's actually curved now and, and collided with another bigger vein and there's just tons of quartz. So the reason why I came this way is because I saw it with my binoculars, all of this quartz float on the surface and I became curious. I mean, it's moderately transparent. It's good, but the thing is, I haven't seen any of this stuff open up into a pocket. Now we are into the granite. Uh, this is actually a 1700 uh, million year old granite, so 1.7 billion year old. The one time I don't bring any of my diagnostic stuff, I find some really weird stuff. Uh, the radioactive rocks are typically like really dark or red, um, but this is really heavy. Maybe m magnetite? I don't even have a magnet. I can say. You can see that there is some indentions that look like garnet uh, crystal structure, submetallic luster uh, i gotta know what it is i will just have to bring a, pe a piece back with me and find out well i'd love to be able to say that it's a magnetite pseudomorph after garnet but it turns out that it is actually garnet after i cleaned it up i just cleaned it up with soap and water and a brush that that red is garnet and that explains the pattern these impressions in it and then that's a full-on garnet crystal, but it's got an overgrowth of magnetite. It's not radioactive whatsoever. Uh, I'll show you a section where we get a definitive magnetite right in here, and then the rest being garnet. Next ridge line over, that vein was going right up to the top, and then this one is following the exact same direction. It's coming uh, from all the way up in here, and that's my walking path direction. Now you can see it's uh, getting bigger, and here it's like a whole riverbed. <coughs> Goodness gracious. That would be amazing to sleep in that. It's like a amphitheater for marmots and hummingbirds. These are the smokiest of smokies that I've seen. And even though it looks like terminations, they're not. These are not angles created by quartz. I will not be duped by these. But yeah, they came from right here. And there's another one. They're just forming up against other like uh, feldspars.
blow a couple bands of muscovite. Here we can see that it's wild. You know, there was just smoky down there and all of this is white. This is a zone pegmatite. So we have a quartz core, these defined different mineral zones. And you can see towards the exterior, like not against the quartz core, some minerals will form against the quartz core, like in uh, NYF pegmatites, uh, the Niobium, Niobium yttrium fluorine pegmatites, you can get topaz right against the quartz core. Um, and as well as other minerals and same with same with tourmaline however we can see that we get out we grade into feldspar and then we get these books of mica combining with the feldspar and then we get into mica feldspar and black tourmaline it's almost like a perfect line and this zone is like you know this thick because we have an outer rim here and all that's black tourmaline the volatile rich rim where we're seeing this tourmaline occurring in abundance on the outermost rim of this zoned pegmatite actually correlates beautifully with what I'm about to describe in terms of the relationship between the mineralogy and the geology of this entire area on a regional scale. Wow, look at this. That is something else. And this is exactly what I was talking about on a smaller scale though, but you see the fabric of the metamorphic rock is like this, the foliations, the differential stress. You can see the patterns that it's making and you can see that these pigmentites are filling them. Path of least resistance is between the two layers of the, the rock that was once sediments and became pressurized and heated into metamorphic. So that's a, a surefire way to encounter pegmatites in metamorphic rock is you look at the contact between the metamorphic rock and the igneous beside it, the granite, and where this comes into a perpendicular uh, intersects the, the, con the contact is perpendicular. This foliation to the granite is where you'll find the pegmatites. And sometimes, you know, there's of course outliers. It doesn't need to be perpendicular, but the foliation can tell you a lot about where to look. It seems a little vague what I was talking about with the perpendicular angle, so I drew a diagram to help out illustrating it and helping you understand what I'm talking about. And this right here, what I'm explaining right now is what all my, this feeling that I, I feel that minerals are gonna be this way. This is what it's all based on. So we have, we begin with uh, this clever man named Stino. His laws essentially govern stratigraphy. And this is what this is based on. So the sequence of events, let's say this is 200 million years ago. We have uh, different sediments depositing, this one being uh, shale, yeah, shale, depositing at the mid-interior seaway, which is a big ocean that separated the, the central United States, the west side from the east side. And so we had marine sediments at the bottom, that's the shale. And then we have like some sand and maybe limestone and, you know, different layers. They consolidate it over time, you know, they compress. And then next we have an intrusion of magma. So this is a pluton uh, coming up. And this is Stino's law of cross-cutting relationships that says this rock has to be younger than this uh, rock over here because it cuts through it. And and not only does it, it carve out that section, but... It takes the path of least resistance, not only between these layers, but all of this stuff right here, it's bedded. It's It's got distinguished beds, and they're following the law of original horizontality, which means it's all just flat and linear. So if these are at an angle, then the magma coming through are going to be at an angle as well. And now we can take it to the next picture. Imagine that line is not there. Um, through the middle, but basically, yeah, now we're at like uh, like 75 million years ago, we had the Laramide orogeny. Orogeny just means mountain building event, and we had a Farallon plate coming over from the west saying what's up to Lil John and the east side boys, and it's an oceanic plate, but it's subducted at a very shallow angle, which means it's bumping, grinding with North America, and it is 
just crumpling up landmass, building the Rocky Mountains, lifting the Colorado pr Plateau, and this is how we get this big tilt. So all of the magma and uh, crystallization and pegmatites occurred before that tilting, and now we get into, basically, that's where that line comes into play. Imagine cutting the top off of that because all of this erodes. The Rockies were like, I don't know, 30,000 feet a while back, and now they're not. So uh, all of that stuff eroded, and we're left with a cross-section through it, and that's what we're looking at right now. And the significance of the shale at the bottom is the sequence of metamorphism. If you, ha if you have uh, some sedimentary rocks and an igneous intrusion coming up right next to it, then it's going to contact or regionally bake all of that sediment. So the sequence from shale is shale to slate, then phyllite, then schist, then gneiss. Nice is high grade metamorphic rock, and that's what we get right at this contact, and that's where we are in the video. And I'm the what I'm talking about is these layers, they're coming out like this because remember, we're tilted. Yeah, I'm trying to do my best in two dimensions. I hope you understand at least some of what's going on. These layers are coming out like this, and the magma has permeated at a perpendicular because if this is contacted it's not occurring over here you know these veins are occurring out sideways over here and sideways over here but there you just have this whole ladder of pegmatites occurring at this contact just up from that location where that really beautiful zone pegmatite is i'm finding a lot of larger caliber black tourmaline just in the float. Still, I have not encountered one void or vug or pocket. All of this is very locked in. Pegmatite, pegmatite, pegmatite. And I think that over there is a hologram. What is going on? That is one beautiful meadow.